It's the Full Force News Burst Extra, brought to you by GeneralsJoesReborn.com, with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic80. With a number of new name only reveals emerging over the past few weeks, it's time to get into one from a few months ago. So let's talk Classified Torch. Okay then, we are back with the Dreadnoughts and after PulseCon a few weeks back and having a better look at Buzzer and Ripper, we can happily take a deep dive on a name-only reveal that we still haven't seen as a digital render yet. Torch. I won't lie, I fully expected to see both Jinx and Torch as digital renders over PulseCon, so I will take that as a win for now. We've got a bunch of new name-only reveals which we will look at soon, but right now it is all about the Dreadnoughts Oxyacetylene Torch Wielder and Cold Slither bass guitarist. Now, Torch is considered one of the original three Dreadnought Stooges, along with Buzzer and Ripper, and have been staples in most iterations of the brand over the years since their introduction in 1985. Designed by the legendary Ron Rudat during his time at Hasbro and inspired by the characters in Mad Max, this motley crew of a biker gang were all given unique gear and specific DIY weapons to suit each personality. Incidentally, Torch was originally designed by Ron to come with a long knife, but the acetylene torch definitely made more sense. There was also a strong possibility that the original figure would come with an entrenching tool that was costed out early on. The text even appeared on some of the early card backs down the side of the bubble, but I couldn't find an image of that in time. In the Sunbow animation, Torch was almost understated in the group because his voice wasn't as high-pitched as the other guys. Frank Welker, who famously lent his voice talents to Megatron, gave Torch a raspy and deep voice, whilst Buzzer and Ripper got more screechy vocals from Neil Ross and Chris Larta respectively. I will say Torch stands out for me in that Revenge of Cobra intro that became the standard Action Force intro, when he appears on screen having just used his oxyacetylene torch as what can only be described as a flamethrower of volcanic proportions. All three original Nox were so unique that they commanded interest as standalone characters, but in the same way that Zaymot and Tomax sort of come as a package, I feel like these guys do as well. You can't have just the one. Unfortunately, as a kid, I did. Buzzer was the only knock I had from the classic trio. I spotted Ripper once in a shop only to choose the motorised battle axe instead. I know, I don't know what I was thinking. More importantly, Torch was never made available in the UK in either the last year of Palatoy or the following rebrand to International Heroes. Monkey Wrench was drafted into the trio for the Action Force weekly and monthly issues around that time, probably because he was the new figure they wanted everyone to buy. Don't worry, I managed to get him. Back to actual Torch now and sticking with animation, as well as the Sunbow series and the movie, he's also been redesigned a few times for use in both the Sigma 6 cartoon in 2005 and G.I. Joe Renegades in 2011. He was prominent in the Marvel comic, first showing up in issue 25. He has been fairly consistent in the comics, showing up with the other knocks in almost every other iteration of the brand, but what about the figures I hear you scream? His first foray into plastic came about in that 1985 US release that also saw the other two dreadnoughts in the wave. Now, there are at least three versions of Torch's file card. The first file card, released in 1985, is tan and contains the text Later Road with the Melbourne Maulers MC and Motorcycle Club. The second file card was also released in 1985 but omits the Motorcycle Club text. The third file card, released in 1986, is grey and also omits the Motorcycle Club text. It is unclear which, if any, version is more difficult to find. Even though we didn't get him in the UK, he did get releases in multiple countries including Mexico in 1985 by Oricon and was renamed Punch by Estrella in Brazil in 1986 as Caveira, which translated from Portuguese means skull, Takara released him as Torch in Japan in 1986, and Plastorama released him in Argentina around the same time as Calavera, which as you can probably guess, also means skull in Spanish. We would have to wait until late 2004 for the next iteration of the character in toy form and the Valor vs Venom line. Torch was made available in a two-pack with Sergeant Bazooka version 2 and was the winner of the first ever G.I. Joe Fans Choice poll. In 2008 he received a 25th anniversary figure in a comic two-pack, this time with fellow knock Ripper version Version 6 and a reprint of Marvel issue number 30. A nice homage on this particular release was the addition of the Melbourne Maulers Motorcycle Club logo on the back of the vest. It was a fun shout out to the original file card and something that was omitted for the following year's repaint of the figure with a tan vest and darker blue pants on a single card. And that's pretty much it. Not a great deal of representation in the action figure realm for old Tom Winkin, so it's very cool that he will be joining his fellow Stooges in the Classified series. Right, with that said, let's get into what we could expect expect to see for Torch in the latest 6-inch iteration of the brand. When looking at Buzzer and Ripper you can really see the 
classic characters in there very clearly, but there are a number of updates that have transpired in order to make them more classified. For one, Buzzer's thigh padding has been redesigned as armour protection just so he doesn't chainsaw his legs off by accident, and with Ripper they have added a lot of little details including a shirt that covers his belly button. I think this has more to do with the reuse of parts than updating the figure because it would have to be a unique torso or a secondary shirt and I think a new sculpted torso would be the best option there. With that information at hand I can see them doing something very similar with Torch. I fully expect his vest to be a secondary piece here just due to the original design and how it would sit on the body. I'm also thinking secondary because if they didn't do a unique belly shirt sculpt for Ripper then why would they do one for Torch? I could be wrong though and they might have decided to go with the sculpt here because they could save money not having done it for Ripper. Either way, this will be interesting to see. It's obvious he won't have a backpack based on the other two knocks, which I do have to say has disappointed me over time. I wasn't fussed about the omission of the packs at first because the figures look so good, but now I'm wondering what Torch's acetylene torch will look like and will he be getting another secondary weapon as well. I think some flame blast effects might be a way to increase the accessory count here as well. Nothing too crazy, maybe one short and one larger burst. This might send him into deluxe territory, but I doubt they would do that when the other two were just mainline retail. A removable skull necklace is a necessity, and now I get why he was called Cavera and Calavera in Brazil and Argentina respectively. Clearly he will also have removable shades again based on the other two knocks, and that secondary bicep strap with the rivets on it. I think it's also very likely he will get the thigh secondary knife sheath with that gnarly knife, and pistol holster with pistol on the other thigh. I would also imagine some tattoo additions, even though the original figure didn't have any at all, that we could see anyway. I can almost see this character design already in my head, once again thanks to the other two figures we've seen revealed. I almost feel as though Torch requires a backpack though, because making the Torch a weapon without some sort of fuel source might be a bit boring. He will probably need something a bit more hardcore as a secondary here in that case, but I'm blanking on what that could be. A more modern flamethrower possibly with the tank attached to the weapon itself, I also have to wonder if the plan to leave backpacks out for these figures now is a ploy to include them in retro releases in the future. It is a possibility and would make them interesting enough to buy a second time. Seems tactical in order to get a reuse out of the figures, but there you have it. I don't really see much in the way of repaints with any of them, so it could be the only way they can see it being done. In any case, I'm very excited to see Torch and to complete the original trio of Nox sooner rather than later. We've gone quite a while without them since Classified started, which is a surprise, so I would expect to see renders for him and some of those other name-only reveals very soon. I'm looking at you, 1027, and possibly MCM London. The final discussion point has to be the box art. After two almost identical render backgrounds for Buzzer and Ripper, it's pretty obvious that Torch will get similar treatment. I was surprised by this decision, especially when they could easily have used the same environment from a completely different angle entirely, maybe looking from the window into the building rather than looking out. And how much fun would it have been if the three boxes placed together built the full image of them all in the same room? I think that's a missed opportunity. That said, I fully expect a very similar background for Torch with another instrument in the background to continue that cold slither homage. Anyway, what do you guys think? Are you excited for Torch in the Classified series? Are you expecting straight vintage? or some extra deluxe stuff? Flaming blast effects, please or nay? Then let me know in the comments below. Okay team, lots more content to come, so keep it locked, stay fresh cheese bags, and as always, full force. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force News Burst Extra. Thank you for watching, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time, and as always, full force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force